Email marketing is used by 4.3 billion people every single day. And why people and marketers, they talk about social media all the time. Facebook, for example, is just used only by around 2 billion people on a monthly basis. So not even a daily basis. So email is used by around every second people on the planet. And I think that's a crazy number. But even more interestingly, according to McKinsey, back in 2010, if you invested $1 into email marketing, you could get a 40x ROI, you could get $40 back on your investment. And just in nine years, this number increased to $43. Why this happened? Mostly because of more advanced tools, automation, more granular segmentation, AI tools, personalization, and all of that, that I will tell you more in this video. So if you want to learn how to get this crazy ROI on email marketing, and if you want to know the seven principles of high converting email marketing now in 2023, then stick to the end of this video. So if you are an online marketer, probably you are used to the fact that things change very fast. But what I really like about email marketing, this is a freaking dinosaur. So email marketing has been here for probably 30 years and honestly it didn't change much. I mean there are new tools like MailChimp, Klaviyo, ActiveCampaign, HubSpot, okay I understand and this improves but when you compare it to Facebook ads, Google ads or even SEO there are algorithm changes, there are tech changes, there is a new platform coming up all the time but the thing is email marketing is relatively simple. When I started out my journey almost six years ago with email marketing honestly since then it hasn't changed much so I want to invest my time and I want to learn things where I can earn a com compound interest by time. Every year my knowledge adds up, I become smarter and smarter and I become closer to the top very few experts in this field. Okay, and now let's see the seven principles of high converting email marketing in 2023. So the first one is you need to build a list. You want to have a list of people, of subscribers who you can target with your email content. So the easiest way to get those subscribers is to have an irresistible offer, also nailing down some technical details, making this not too annoying and also your messaging should be on point. If you want to have an irresistible offer, you should be creative about it because I can see 90% of brands, they only, you know, throw out a discount code 5%, 10%, maybe 20% off, welcome 20, and that's it. You want more than that. So you want to show an ebook, free content. What I really like is a cheat sheet. We have the same. If you go down the description, you will find that. You can also come up with a free sample product. One of my favorite uh, skincare brands, Lumin Skin, they have it. They send you a free product sample and you can try it. Usually free product samples has the highest conversion rate. We have another uh, client who offer a free t-shirt if you subscribe. You immediately get a physical product for free from them, so you naturally become more interested to business with them. Of course, you should consider the value of each subscriber, so this business can afford a t-shirt because their average order value is somewhere around two, three thousand dollars, so they know this investment is really worth it. But at the end of the day, you want to be smart about your offer, you can check out some bigger brands, get ideas, but please, please, please don't just think in discounts because it's just so boring. So once you come out with your irresistible offer, you want to present it to your people. My favorite is to set up a website pop-up and it should appear at the right time. It shouldn't be annoying. So people, they should be able to cancel this pop-up even on mobile to make sure that the actual user experience is on point. We go into Google Analytics and we check how much time, how many seconds people actually spend on your pages, on your website, and that's the time when the pop-up appears on the website. We can set up the trigger in that way. The other favorite one is to simply ask people during the checkout process to subscribe to your email list, or maybe even to your SMS list. Once you converted your website visitors into your email subscribers, then you can target them, retarget them with a welcome email flow. 
And in this email flow, you want to be really straight to the point in most cases, especially if your average order value is below $100, because that's a highly impulsive buy. And at this point, they are not super interested in your brand. So you don't want to oversell them. You don't want to tell too much about yourself and your story, your products to them. Simply, you want them to convert fast, relatively quickly. So that's why you want to have an irresistible offer and in your welcome email flow, you can give them what you promised in your pop-up and why they subscribe. If you check out Russell Branson's Soap Opera Sequence, I think that's a perfect example how you can get started with a welcome email flow and with an irresistible offer. So once you get more and more subscribers, the next thing is to send high quality content to them. You want to send content to your subscribers that they love, they follow, but even more important, they buy from. You want to be very personal. So you don't want to be that typical corporation that use those big capitalized letters, 50% off, 30% off, big sale, because people, they spot very fast that this is just a promotion and you will land actually in the promo tab or even in the spam folder. You want your emails look like an email from a friend, maybe even from a colleague. You want to keep your uh, subject line very personal, ideally make it short. It's, it should be like a friendly barter with a friend in the pub. This is just a general guideline because in my experience this gives you a high engagement and also purchase rate. Figure out the idle tone of voice of your audience. Go to your customer reviews and see what words, what lingo, what language these people use. You want to talk to them. You want to have a phone call with them. You want to talk to your real customers, your real subscribers, see how they speak, how they behave, what their hobbies are, what their biggest fears and all of these. Next thing is to create an actual content calendar. And why I'm saying this because this is probably one of the biggest mistakes, the biggest failures with small businesses. They just send out some random email campaigns or maybe set up some random email flows and that's it. That's why they don't have the results that they really aim for with email marketing. So consistency is key when it comes to email and you don't want to over uh, complicate this. So you want to go to a spreadsheet and you just want to add blocks the 2nd of April I will send out a sales email promoting XYZ product to XYZ segment and that's it once you have the plan you can start the execution and you can iterate later many people they ask me how many sales emails they should send out versus how many content emails or not sales emails let's say you should start out with 50 50 so 50% of emails should be more promo based you want to sell the product and the other 50% it should be more trust based you can send out reviews you can share stories you can send a survey you can also tell about your newest product development methods or how you create your products you can send a blog article a YouTube video in your email if you have a solid brand many times you will see not sales emails can convert better than sales email people they are tired of two pushy sales. Once you send out, you know, 20, 30 email campaigns, you will see what type of emails convert better. And after you can iterate and see where you should move with this ratio. And my really last tip for you. So I think Ogilvy said, when you spend $1 on ads, 80 cents out of that $1 is actually spent on your headline. And in email marketing, this is the subject line. So you really want to have great subject lines because if nobody opens your email, then nobody will read them and click and buy. Questions work very well or something with exclamation mark and short subject lines. The other thing will be call to action. Make sure you have good call to actions, make them short as well. And of course you can experiment. Maybe you can add some emojis. Yeah, you can play around subject lines and call to action, those are crucial to have high converting emails. But one of the biggest mistakes I can see with small businesses that they actually don't segment their email campaigns. So today with tools like Klaviyo or Active Campaign, you can do amazing things when it comes to segmentation of your email subscribers. There are many, many ways to segment your subscribers. Maybe you can even get lost. Here are a few examples. One is location. You can uh, see where your subscribers live. 
in uh, tools like Klaviyo, for example. I know for many small businesses that's actually important. Another way to do it is uh, what they purchased before, their purchase history. You want to know who purchased this uh, glass of supplement. Most likely those people will buy the pills after. So you want to find those people, you want to segment da down those people and you want to target them with a specific email campaign selling the pills because you know that's the most likely that they will buy next. So actually purchase history can be an important one as well. And then the next would be if they are VIP customers or not. How much they spent in the past, how many times they actually purchased in the past. This is also important because if somebody never purchased or somebody purchased at least 500 bucks in the past three months, that's a huge difference, right? So probably you are more okay to give a di bigger discount to your VIP subscribers while to those who never purchased I think you should be more strict what you really give them. Number four would be really finding the window shoppers. Those people who buy during the holiday season, especially during Black Friday and Christmas in Q4. Why those are important? Because those people, they are usually very price sensitive and when it comes to Q4, I think most businesses, they are okay to give a bigger discount and you really want to find those people and see who purchased last year during this holiday season and you want to target them with a very similar campaign, with a bigger discount and make them shop again in your store. Number five is the the most common one that we use with almost all of our clients. So this is engagement based segmentation. We set up segments like engage 7, engage 30, engage 180, engage 1 year. We check if people opened or clicked an email in the last 30 days and if they did they will be a part of this segment they can still be in the engage 90 segment for example we really like this segmentation it's even better than purchase behavior somebody may be purchased on the website because they are active on tiktok or facebook but we do email marketing we want to see those people who actively engage with emails and we want to send more emails to them this is the most reliable segmentation and I really recommend for you as well to rely on this segmentation when it comes to your segmentation strategy in email marketing. Number four will be a very simple principle. You regularly want to clean your list. Most email marketing tools they charge based on the number of your email list. If you have a bunch of subscribers who never open your emails, they never read your emails, then you don't want them on your list, right? You don't want to pay after those people. If someone is not part of the engage six months or engage 12 months then we usually separate them we put them into a different segment and at least every six months or once a year we delete those uh, profiles. For example in Klaviyo you can suppress those people so you don't have to delete them you will still have them in your database but Klaviyo won't charge for these accounts so do it regularly you don't want to pay after these accounts. My next big point for you is uh, make sure that your inbox rate is high. This is something that email marketing software tools, they don't really talk about. They don't share this information with you, but there are third party tools that you can use. G-Lock app, it's around 50 bucks a month. Uh, the other one is a bit more pricey, it's called Mail Monitor. You want to know how many emails get into the inbox into the promo tab and into the spam folder. Sometimes we can see that half of the emails, they end up in the spam folder. They have no chance to be read by the recipient, exactly because they end up in the freaking spam folder. You should find and use a solid ESP, email marketing uh, software tool. These tools, they send out your emails from dedicated IP addresses. And email service providers such as Gmail, Yahoo or Hotmail, they have spam filters and they regularly track the quality of the emails but also the reputation of the email sending IPs. So that's why I don't recommend that you should use some cheaper email tools or something you've never heard about. I think in this case it's better to pay a bit more for an email software tool. So do your research regarding that and also check reviews but once you decided 
go ahead with the best tool that you found and uh, you can also check your inbox rate with GLOCAB or Mail Monitor. After you find the ideal tool, the next thing is to send high quality content to your subscribers. And if you already have a subscriber list of at least 5,000 people, you want to go a bit slower. Because if you start sending out tens of thousands of emails with a cold and new sending domain and with a new email software account then you can get into trouble very very fast send a few email campaigns to only a few dozens and then a few hundreds and then a few thousands of people and let's uh, space it out for at least two three weeks after three four weeks you can send your emails even to the whole list these uh, email service providers like gmail yahoo hotmail they see this as a suspicious behavior if you start sending out tens of thousands of of emails right from the beginning. This is called a warm-up process. And another trick you can use, in your emails, go to the PS, write the PS, ask your subscribers, your readers to reply to this email. Try to engage with them and try to get their reply to your email. This is the best way to engage with them and the email service providers, they can see that engagement and your inbox rate will get much better much sooner. You should follow five KPIs. Make sure you are in the green zone. Here on the screen, you will see what metrics mean the red zone, what metrics mean the yellow zone, and what is green. And these are open rate, click rate, bounce rate, spam complaint rate, and unsubscribe rates. Make sure that you constantly stay in the green zone and you try to avoid the yellow and especially the red zone. And now the next thing, less than probably 10% of companies do it properly, and this is called split testing. This gives you an opportunity to really learn about your audience, your product market fit, and the right copywriting tone, and what kind of emails you should really send to your uh, subscribers. Subscribers. Before you start testing anything, you should write down a list of things what you want to test in the future. You should make a plan. So let's say I want to split test if a question is a better subject line for my email or a simple statement. My hypothesis the question will work better because it sparks curiosity more in people than a statement. And then the third thing is to add a key PI, a metric that you track and based on that number you can decide which is the winning variation so for subject line this is usually an open rate and why it's called iterative testing because by time you will learn more and more about your audience and what emails you should send them let me tell you the five favorite split tests that i run number one probably not a surprise subject line testing you really want to test your subject lines why because it affects the open rates and if you have a higher open rates you will have more clicks and more purchases at the end of the day. Second would be, would be the preview text. It really complements the subject line. If your preview text is good, it's solid, it will help people to understand why they should open your email. So you can also test the preview text. KPI should be the operate. Next one is image and text ratio inside your email. So once they open your email, you really want to test out more images make sense or more text, what sells better, what makes higher click-through rates to your website from the email. The fourth thing I would test is short versus long copy. If I need to write short emails with 50, 100 words maximum, or rather I have to write longer emails like four or 500 words. And then the last one is smart sending time. If you use Klaviyo, you want to know when people read your emails. With Tools like Klaviyo, there is an AI tool that you can use. It will measure for you what's the best time of the day to send out your email. Let's say I want to send out 2,400 emails in one day. Then I tell Klaviyo, okay, I pick the smart send time and tell me after one day what was the best time to send this email. And then every hour, Klaviyo will send out 100 emails to 100 recipients. And after one day, I will see, hmm, okay, actually 3 p.m. was the best time to send out those emails because those emails have the highest open rate. Smart send time is actually a very handy tool. You don't have to guess what's the best time to send out your email campaigns. Klaviyo can help you with that. And now here the seventh and the last thing. Why I love email marketing? Because it's easy to track almost everything. You can see how many people open your emails, 
you can measure your inbox rate as I said earlier you can check how many they click and go from your email to your website you can see how many of them unsubscribe how many bounce and also how many complaint about your email that this is a spam. You don't have to rely on your emotions too much. You don't want to have an opinion, but what you want to have is data. Data-driven decisions are super important now in 2023. Unfortunately, some email tools are less reliable, especially with the new iOS changes. Open rates are quite flawed nowadays. And also how much revenue you make from emails. You can integrate your uh, tools with Google Analytics. Many times there will be big differences between your email tool, what it says that, you know, what attributes to email and, and what GA Google Analytics tells you. Truth is somewhere in between. I think it's good to use at least two tools to measure the revenue from email. One choice can be Google Analytics and the other one can be your email marketing software too. Hey Budai Nation, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you go down and you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also hit the notification bell so you get updated of my newest videos. Here at Budai Media, we want to help at least 1,000 e-commerce businesses grow with retention marketing. We want more businesses to focus on their best customers to increase their lifetime value. Also, I will leave a 50-point checklist into the description. And finally, let me leave you here another video where I talk about the top 10 e-commerce tools that you can use now and you can go to that video and check it out.